So you've created a spell jar, but like, now what? What do you do? How do you keep it working for you? How do you keep the energy flowing? I actually get this question a lot in my comment section and I figured it's about time that I make a video about it just to help you guys out because I have quite a few videos on spell jars but I don't have a lot of information about you know what do you do after you've created the spell jar now for me personally I think one of the most important things about spell jars is not allowing the energy to go stagnant and I've had this happen I'm not perfect I get busy and I've had spell jars where I've like kind of forgotten about them and that's not necessarily always a bad thing sometimes you know you do a spell jar it does its job and then it's done but then the energy does go stagnant and at that point it's time to dispose of it and make a new one I can tell you there is definitely at least one spell jar in my room that I haven't touched or looked at in a while and I'm like I could feel it like the energy stagnant it's not doing anything it's just kind of sitting there on my shelf collecting dust then there's spell jars like this one that's very freshly made that I have been working with frequently and and I keep it where I will see it. But basically I have a list of ways that you can activate, charge, and just work with your spell jars so that they don't go stagnant. And sometimes it's inevitable, eventually you will need to make a new one, but there are things that you can do to prolong the usability of your spell jars. So one of the things I like to do is meditate with it. And it doesn't have to be for a very long time either. So all that really requires is you sit with the jar, you can hold it in your hands, you can hold it to your heart, whatever feels good to you. And just again, you're reflecting on, you're thinking of the things that this jar spell is going to bring you. You're thinking about, you know, the intention, really kind of basically reinforcing the intention that you already initially put into the spell jar. But it just keeps the energy flowing. It keeps it charged. And honestly, I think this is something that everyone should be doing with their spell jars. Different people might believe different things and not agree with me, that is okay. But I think that it will work better if you continue to work that intention and you're continuing to put that intention out into the universe as well. Number two, charging it. There are other ways that you can charge your spell jar to keep it strong. And I would say choose your technique based on what the spell jar is, like what it's designed to do and maybe what energy you're working with. For example, you can charge up the sun. You know, you can charge it with that solar energy. If it's a very active spell, like maybe it's a spell to motivate you or something like that. I don't know. Maybe you are somebody who often has a hard time getting motivated to take action. So you create a spell jar to help you with that. It would make sense then to charge your spell jar with an active energy such as the sun. You know, the sun has a very active masculine, divine masculine energy that is really helpful for something like that. So it would make sense. You Maybe you put it on your windowsill. Maybe you put it outside for an hour or so. But maybe you do a spell that the moon makes more sense. So you charge it under a full moon. You put it outside and you bring it in before morning or maybe you put it on your windowsill. Again, I like putting things on my windowsill because sometimes I can't be bothered to go outside and remember to go outside at nighttime. So I put it on my windowsill and then usually I'll wake up at some point in the middle of the night and I'll take it off the windowsill or something like that. It's gonna really depend on what the spell is, what works for you. You might actually charge it with a bowl of crystals. So maybe you create create a bowl of crystals that kind of suits the intention and you place the jar in the bowl of crystals to charge. Maybe you charge it with water. You know, there's so many different things. Maybe you charge it with the earth. Sometimes people will charge items with the earth. They'll kind of bury it and then they'll dig it back up. You can even do it in a house plant in your house if you're worried about losing it, something like that. Or honestly, again, your own energy. Your own energy can charge items too, so you can charge it literally with your own energy, which is kind of similar to adding the intention, except it might be a little bit different. You might be more so visualizing your energy flowing into the spell jar itself. So it really depends on the person, but these are just various ways that you can charge your spell jar. Another really easy one that you can honestly just do every day, like a couple times a day, that kind of thing, is to shake it. It's so easy, it takes a few seconds. Every so often I'll just give my spell jar a little shake. It keeps the energy flowing. Obviously, like when I shake it, I'm not just shaking it. Like I am kind of also putting intention into it as well. So it's kind of like a combination of both. But the shaking, I find just, again, keeps that movement, keeps the energy flowing. It just makes it feel fresh, if that makes any sense. So this is something that's super easy that anyone can honestly do. The fourth thing you can do with your spell jar is to keep it on an altar space that you regularly work with. This is very effective because usually an altar space is pretty 
well kept if it's done pro if it's done well if it's done properly I guess I mean everyone's practice is gonna be different normally you don't want to keep your altar space a mess usually that's a place that you're supposed to keep clean you're supposed to cleanse not just you know physically keep the dust away but also spiritually cleanse as well it's just something that's considered sacred so usually you take good care of it you put items that are for you like if it's an altar for you or maybe it's an altar for a specific purpose or a deity or something like that so it's gonna very much depend on what your altar space is for but if you keep it on an altar space essentially what that's doing is it's keeping the energy fresh if you're somebody who works at your altar space pretty consistently you know you sit down there for workings you sit at your altar space to meditate whatever it is that energy is flowing that energy is moving so it's a really good place to put it also you're most likely to have other items on that altar space too whether it is I don't know it could be crystals it could be oils it could be herbs people put anything on their altar spaces it really depends on the person it depends on what the purpose of the altar space is but it's surrounded by the energy of those other items so essentially it is also kind of being charged by what's surrounding it too so keeping a jar spell on an altar space is actually a really good idea maybe you create an altar space for yourself and that's where you keep your self-love jar spell or something like that that could be a very effective way of using it a great place to keep it a great place for it to continue to work its energy yeah anyways guys I hope this video helped you guys out in your own practice I hope it answered some questions that you maybe had about jar spells and how to work with them and what to do with them after you've created them if you guys like this type of content make sure you subscribe if you haven't yet I do post new videos every single week and I wouldn't want you guys to miss out on them I also have a magical newsletter so you can also subscribe to that below if you are interested in receiving magical goodies I hope you guys have a beautiful day or night whenever you're watching this and I will see you guys in the next video bye bye guys